bits of an artist's life. Today I have a huge art supply haul for you guys. I have so many things and quite a variety of things. And I think I'm going to start with the non-emotional and then move to the emotional. Yes, I had some things that literally as I was looking at them was getting like choked up and I cannot wait to share them with you. Let's start with also least boring to more interesting way. Boring to interesting. I don't know. Anyways, we'll first start with what these represent. These are the keys. They're called keys for my large canvas stretcher bars. I bought some more large canvas stretcher, why not stretcher boards? What are they called? Stretcher bars to make large canvases like what I'm working on back there. And for some reason they sent this and then the long, really long stretcher bars in another box, which I'm not gonna bore you with here, but they're in the other room. Next, as usual, it's like a becoming a theme here that I'm like, I don't like this. And then I, next time I'm like, oh, I really ended up liking this. So I bought this little bitty, uh, oh no, what a bummer. Urgh. I just took the little plasticky thing off and somebody had taken it off and put it back on. I thought it looked weird. Oh, look at that. Well, I'm gonna be sending that back or contacting them about it because that can't be fixed. Okay, so let me get back to what I was saying. Basically, I bought one of these a while back and told you guys, I was like, I don't like it. The handle's real thin. There was a lot of things I didn't like about it. Well, I ended up really liking it, so I bought another one. I guess I'll be getting another one because this. Okay, well, that's a bummer. Anyways, it's a Blick number eight. Basically, these are like Chinese bristle or Chinese calligraphy brushes. Let me also tell you, while I've got a pointer, that all the items will be listed below, links and stuff. Okay, well, I guess I'll add that to my to-do list today to contact the company. All right. I just dipped this brush in the water, and the brushes, I mean, the, the things did kind of go back. I'm just trying to decide if I should still try to save this. But I'm going to take some of my Murphy's soap that I used to wash the brushes in, and I'm going to form this and set it aside, and it may be salvageable. It was so cheap that it may be worth trying to save. I think I'm going to be able to salvage this one. Then I also had quite the, oh wait, this is not real exciting either, so let me go on and mention this. I bought another big tube of gesso. This is what I use. I'm scraping the barrel of the other bottle. Sometimes I will buy the white, sometimes I buy the black. And then I usually have a third one when these start getting kind of empty, I add some color to them. But lately I've been trying to get back to painting on just a white surface. So there's luminosity. That's like the, that's what that means. Luminosity. Then I also had two, um, like, why did I buy these <laughs> purchases? <laughs> Very much splurge. I bought fluorescent colors. Did I do that? I know I did it. I've been painting these boats a lot and sometimes for like the buoys or little specks here and there. I've been wanting some like pop of color. Well, here's some pop. I mean, whew. so I got these two, a yellow and a pink. And let me tell you, they are right. We'll play around with those in a few minutes. But they're like, put your sunglasses on. Right. So there's that. So I've got a little space left in my sketchbook where I do my color swatches. And I want to do a little color swatch of my neon colors. So let's do that. And I'm doing this in my Stillman and Burn hardcover Zeta sketchbook. Yep. Ooh, it covers really well. I wasn't expecting that. Wow, that's bright. I also have a feeling that this is going to make a beautiful orange when mixed together. So I'll try that too. Wow, this pink, guys. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. I have no idea if this is going to show up on camera as being as bright as this is. It's definitely like 80s. Where is it? Is that 90s? I should know. I grew up in that. Wow. 
Okay, I'm cracking up that I bought these. This is not me. Wow, and then the yes, this does make, wow, neon orange. Wow, that's hysterical. Wow. Okay, well, there that is. Okay, let me show you this first because this is really funny. Okay, I'm glad I have three right here. So I also, I've been loving the Liquitex soft body acrylic so much that I have already needed to buy some of the yellow and blue. I really needed to buy some more red, but I didn't for whatever reason. So I got some more of the Cad Cadmium Free Yellow Light in the Ultramarine Green Shade. Usually I go for the red shade, but they didn't have the bigger bottle in the red shade. So here's the small bottles and here's the next size and I'll show you the, the, it's like baby bear, mama bear, and papa bear. I'll show you that in a minute. Here are the two colors that I bought there. I'm really liking this Cadbury yellow light. It's just nice. It's got some oomph to it. Yeah, I just really been liking it. Okay, wait, let me keep this over here. Okay, this will tell you how much I have actually like committed to this paint. Guys, okay, here we go. Let's see if I can do this. I mean, this jar makes me laugh. This is the white. I would not have bought this if Grady wasn't with me because it just is so expensive. But I'll use it and I'll go through it. Okay, but let me show you. Even on this one, let me see if I can do this. Okay, I did it. Even the big one has the squirty top which I like because, hold on. I like putting these paints in smaller, wider jars. So I just save all my like hair products and lotion, anything that has a good jar. In fact, the other day I bought peanut butter just for the jar. I just went ahead and announced it to Grady because I knew he was gonna say something. Normally he's like, did you buy this for the jar? But what's nice, even for the big boy, is that I can get that in there really nice. Even though this like made me laugh and I thought, I'll never use this. Well, it's perfect. Okay, so there's that. That, that means commitment to the product for sure. Okay, now what should I show you next? Show you that brush. Okay, next, I ordered two sketchbooks from Nina Cosford. I hope I'm saying her name, her last name right. Cosford, I think that's how you say it. She is an illustrator and artist that I really like, and she ended up making her own, not like hand making, but um, found a company or something. I don't know what process she went through to make her own sketchbook. She was looking for the perfect sketchbook for her. I mean, everybody has their own. I ended up getting two of them because I thought maybe my niece would like one, that it would be a nice Christmas gift. So I got one and I went ahead and opened one of them. One I want to keep like this to give to my niece. Uh oh, if she's watching this. She's going to know that. Hmm. Maybe she's not watching. Whoops. I'm gonna give this to someone <laughs> at Christmas. So I went ahead and opened it and I've been using it because I wanted to give you some feedback on, listen to those pages. It's oh, good, on um, the sketchbook. It's not. It's a uh, nice paper, it's cream paper. It's thinner, I'm definitely finding that I like thick paper. But I do like a sketchbook like this because sometimes you just need to like, some stuff down and and then I have other sketchbooks where it's like I'm coming with like a really good intentional sketch. Got my new Nina sketchbook and I want to do what I usually do which is start this with a test page. I'm going to do it right here. This first page feels a little thicker than the normal pages so I definitely want to be doing my test on a normal page. And I've got a whole bunch of things here. I've got my gouache and watercolor. I've got color pencils and markers. I'm just going to test everything and see, you know, how it feels on here. Does it bleed through? I'm gonna even use things like just regular pens and pencils and do scribbles and test and try things out. This is always like so exciting to do to me. For me, it's really, really fun. I don't label anything, just put marks down because I really just want to see how the paper feels. This is meant to be like a, 
you know, make a mess page. I like even just the pencil on this paper. That's nice. All right, now I want to try my Tombow markers. Now my guess is this paper will definitely buckle when it gets wet, and that's fine. I don't fear the buckle. Oh, it's got a little bit of a resist to it, which I like. It's going to be a nice sketchbook, and there's a ton of pages. That paint is still wet, so I just kind of wanted to see how well the paper holds up to, you know, some stuff going over it. And, yeah, it's not ripping or anything. Yay, I'm excited. So the paper is meant, I think, more for marker and basically non-water, you know, you're not, you know, it's definitely going to bulk if you're using water. So I've done a lot of water stuff on here and you can see, um, I mean, I definitely don't mind buckling. It's not like redonkulous buckling. I'll show you a couple of the sketches that I've been doing in it. I did my normal test page where I'm trying out stuff. So here I used ink. I used this Higgins ink, which usually does bleed through paper, but it looks gorgeous on this cream paper. I've been sketching some things from the uh, Mary Fedden and Fairfield Porter book. Then this is a sketch from the Porter book, and I used just a water and paintbrush in this Art Graft watercolor graphite. And I think it looks gorgeous on this paper. And then here I used my Nia Color. The ink definitely bleeds through, but there's so many pages in here that I can just do every other one. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. One of the things that I did recently, this has a pocket at the back. And I was thinking about taking this with me on walks. So what I did, I just cut a piece of cardboard and inserted it in that little pocket. And now it gives me, you know, especially if I'm just using this side, it gives me something firm. And I've already been getting a lot of use out of the sketchbook. And I'm excited to have an extra one to give to somebody. Okay, now, I bought, I think, possibly the largest sketchbook I've ever bought. And I'm super excited about it. And I have not even opened it or, well, I've opened, I've taken the plastic off couldn't help myself. I needed to look at the paper. We're going to play around in it together and test the paper. So it is, I think this is an A5. Does it say on here? I always get the A blah blah blahs mixed up. It probably says it on like big letters. Um, I can't find it. But guys, it's huge. Now let me open it for you. When I opened it for Grady, he was like, wow, that is big. Okay, you ready? Let me, oh, it's not going to give you I don't know that you're getting good scale for that. What size is 11 by 16. Expandable inner pocket. What does that mean? Expandable. Oh, it just has a pocket at the back. I got excited for a second. I was like, expandable pocket. What does that mean? So, it is cream paper. And it's not super thick. I think it's going to be like perfect thickness. So when it's real thick, I, I do like thick paper, but you don't get as much. So you feel precious about it. This is like the perfect, like it's thin enough that I feel like, well, if I just want to do like a quick, simple sketch, I can do that. I'm quite excited. I really like the fact that I could do like a nice landscape mode or open it up and get something really big. Super excited about that. We're going to play in a little while with the paper and see what it does. Cause I haven't tested any of that. I thought I would save that with you guys. We'll test it with like ink, well, all the things. I got a range of things for us to test. I'm testing it on the if found page and I just covered up my info. And let's just start off with maybe the most obvious things that I think are going to do fine. I don't know really why I grabbed this create a color because I never use it. I saw it and thought, ooh, let's see what that does. And I've got a couple watercolor pencils here, Prismacolor. And let's put some water on those. Let's see how the paper handles that. This is a Aquarella Caran d'Ache. I got this free in some kind of package. 
Actually, I really like the way that this is feeling on this paper. Let's see what happens when we... Ooh, wow, okay. Hmm, I need to be using this more. Wow, look at that. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm taking this with me tomorrow when I go walking. That's awesome. All right, I may need to look into buying some more of these. Wow. Now, let's try the Pigma Sensei marker that I like to use quite a bit. And we'll look at the back side after all of this dries. Ooh, I love it on this paper. Wow, okay, I love that. Uh, yeah, I love the way that's sitting on that paper too. It's a really pretty black with that cream. Okay, that's gonna go with me sketching tomorrow. And then I've got a Tombow marker. And again, I wanna just, in a few minutes, after everything dries, look over on the other side to see how, you know, things are, you know, showing through. So far, I'm super happy with this paper, wow. All right, here I have a tempera paint stick that somebody sent me a set of and I love, but some paper I like to use these with and some I don't, so let's just see what happens. Ooh, ooh yep, yeah, okay, wow. Yep, we'll see if that bleeds through to, to the other side. I haven't checked to see if these re-wet. What if these re-wet? Oh my gosh, they kind of do. Oh, wow. Wow, okay, wow. Huh. Wow, okay. Wow, okay, that's exciting. <laughs> Sorry about all the wiles. All right, now let's get into the real test. Let's see if this bleeds through because this bleeds through everything, even though I love it. And I love the way it sits. I do have two pieces of paper underneath here to kind of block this so I don't ruin too many pages. But I love this ink. The color of it is just, it's amazing. I feel like the paper's really holding up, guys. I mean, it is not buckling yet. Now I'm going to use some of my Daler Roni, or I reset that, Scarlet Acrylic Ink. I don't expect this to bleed through. This is the stuff that loves to like just seep, 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 seep through. But the way it sits, usually after it does that, is pretty amazing. I'm kind of wanting to see what this thing though. I'm really liking this. Wow. Oh wow. That is so stinking smooth. This is still damp. Jeez. Wow. Okay. Huh. It's gonna be interesting to see if this squishes over. I hate things that then squish over on the other page. Wow, I am super impressed with this though. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, now let's try this. God, that looks so pretty on that cream. Wow. 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 Paper's holding up even to some stuff like that. Wow, okay, that was fun. Now I've got some watercolor here. Let's dip into this. God, it's so smooth. I love smooth paper. I just love it. I feel like this paper's gonna allow me to work over and work over stuff. Wow, that's pretty exciting. Okay, maybe I should go get some acrylic paint and we'll just, yeah, let me go get some acrylic paint. Hold on, let's just do this. Let's dip into the neon pink, fluorescent pink, that's what it is. Oh my, I'm really happy with this paper. Wow, okay, man, I'm gonna enjoy this. Hmm. Yeah, this is gonna be nice. I've got like in this, ooh, I bet this pink's gonna look nice up against that green. Wow. Okay, wow, this is gonna be amazing, guys. Well, the battery died on me, uh, but I'm feeling like this is going to be amazing paper. I'm kind of now thinking, wow, I should have been maybe buying some of this, this paper some more, but we'll see how it, it is starting to buckle just a little bit. Okay, guys, these are just cracking me up. They look like weird fingers now with like nail polish. Hmm. 
I've been working so much bigger lately with my canvases and everything that I really feel squished in my sketchbook sometimes. So this is going to be nice to have and just be able to like do some nice free big movements. Wow, that was a ton of fun. I'm going to take a lunch break, let this dry, and then we'll see what happens to the paper on the other side. Oh, you know what? I also wanted to try. No, hold tight. Hold tight. I want to try this. This is the watercolor graphite, and I love this stuff. Ooh, I think this is going to look amazing. I really like this stuff, guys. This stuff's, like, amazing on um, smooth paper, too. I love it. I'm gonna do some more wiping out, just see how the paper holds up. Yeah, it handled that well. Okay, interesting. You know what I didn't try? Some wax pastels. Let me go get those. I'm gonna have to do more pages like this because this is just really fun, like just big movements. All right, this is my Karen Dash Neocolor Aquarella. Aquarella, how do you say that? So let's let's do some mark making. And add some water to that. And then let's try some of this. Oh, this is delightful on this paper. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. Jeez. Jeez, jeez, jeez. This is just cheap wax pastels. Or they're called oil pastels, but they're pretty waxy. Wow. This makes me so happy. <laughs> wow. The neighbors are going to be cracking up when I'm carrying this for like my walks, this big old honking. Because guys, it's big. Wow, this is just so nice. Jeez, I may sit here all day doing this. Hmm. Okay, well, that was a heap of fun. I can't stop. Okay, I'm going to, ooh, but ooh, should we see? Ooh, this is a pretty color. I love this color. One of the reasons I like to do this too is because then I get to see how, sm you know, what things smush over onto the page and how smushy they get. Okay, I need to stop. I need to stop. But let's let this dry and we'll come back and see how it, you know, things bled through. Ooh, that was fun. Guys, I was thinking about this green and I want to put a couple more layers or at least one more layer because sometimes I do that with my sketches with this. And so I want to see... What is that going to do? Like, can the paper, you know, withstand that? Hold that. Or is it going to bleed through? Because maybe one layer went it, but two layers maybe would. And while I'm at it, I'll just put it around. This is what I wanted to see. How much can the paper take? I'm back from lunch. I have some coffee and moment of truth with this. Let's take this off. You can see right here there's a little bit of buckling. Can you see that? Totally fine. I don't, that doesn't bother me one bit. There, that's a good shot. Then, so here's the paper that I had. You can tell it got a little wet. I can tell there's some buckling to that too. A little bit of buckling. Then that page is fine. And then this page, you can definitely see the wompity womps. That's what I would call them, the bump, bump, bumps. But sometimes with paper, then once you work on this side, it flattens out a lot. Okay, the whole point was to see if this bled through. I'm not seeing any of the green ink on here. I can see a tiny bit of it right here and here, but it's not bad at all and I put quite a bit down so that's pretty amazing compared to this sketchbook do you remember these pages are much thinner and these feel pretty delicate they kind of like ruffle up or start shedding some but look at the difference compared to so much better yeah really good okay that makes me happy okay now let's get to the good stuff guys I got two art books 
that I just cannot even tell you. I was excited about them, but when I got them, they were a hundred times better than what I thought it was gonna be. I don't even know which one to start with. Okay, we'll start with this one. I've got a Mary Fedden book. One of you guys messaged me and said, you have to get this book. If you like Mary Fedden, you have to get it. Guys, it, <sighs> It did not disappoint. I am trying to take my time working through it. I went into Grady. I was like this. I was holding this and walked into his office. And I don't know what my face was doing. But he he had to, I think he thought something had happened. <laughs> like not like bad. Because he was like this. And then I was like, this book. He was like, oh, that's all that's going on. I was like, this book. It's just got really wonderful, like just a great balance of talking about her, but then also painting so many more paintings than what I've seen of hers. And some of my favorites that I love of hers are in here. I mean, <laughs> it just, her art, her art and like who she is just make me so happy. Sometimes I like an artist, but then when I learn about who they are and how they, it's like, makes me struggle with liking their art because they're just like a ugly person or something. <laughs> I mean, oh, there's just so many. I'm gonna show y'all some images in here. I've been kind of marking things that, I, that I'm like, oh, I just forgot to show you guys. I mean, this bowl of noodles, hello. I don't know, it just feels like such inspiration. One of the things I like about Mary Fedden also is that she did exactly what, what I'm wanting to do. There's this balance of like, she definitely painted from life and observation, but then she would, she would paint from her sketches. Maybe that's even where I first learned it was from her, I, that concept, I don't know. But she has that whimsical and like very cheerful, happy, like her, her art just, as happy and she was a happy person. So she has that whimsical playfulness, you know, volcano and zebra in the background of her still life. We lay down paint quite differently. The main reason I got this, not only do I love Mary Fedden, but I wanted to look at paintings in the way of composition and study that from her because I think that's one of the things I'm struggling with where I'm putting like just big shapes, where I put the table, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. I wanted to get that for that purpose. And it, it's a big book, like it's way bigger and thicker than, I thought it was gonna be like a little coffee table thing. It's just, it makes me so stinking happy. And when I did a quick flip through to find that there were sketches in here, man, let me see artist sketches, even more than their paintings. Yes, 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 please. This is one I'm going to be revisiting over and over and over. So the person that, sent this to me or recommended this to me. Thank you. Makes me so happy. Mm. Inspiration for miles. Okay. Then the next one. I have been wanting to get a Fairfield Order book for forever, but they're always so expensive and it's hard to just like buy books like this, art books online, because you don't, even though it does tell you the dimension and what all, it's just hard to know. I'm just a visual, give me the thing, let me touch it, let me look at it. So I found one of his books for a pretty decent price. I feel like it was like 40, maybe, maybe it was 30 or $40. It was definitely in my like, okay, I can swallow that. And I've been wanting to have some things in here that inspired me and that I could flip through and expand my book collection. I don't buy books, art books very often because they're always so expensive. But I found one that was pretty decent. I reached out to a friend of mine. There's one that I've had my eye on and I've seen it at her place. So I messaged her and I was like, is this $40 book or whatever it was, 30 or 40? I was like, is this the one that you have? And she was like, no, I paid like 200 and something for mine. And she sent me the one that she got. And then I found it on Amazon, her 200 and something dollar one. I found it on Amazon for like $80. So I sent it to Grady and was like, um, could you get this for me like now for Christmas? Because it may be 200 later. I really want it. So I'm excited about that. I hope that we get that for Christmas. But this one, guys, I couldn't believe how big it was when I got it. Like, it's, I mean, just, oh, guys, I got choked up when I was flipping through this thing. I mean, okay, this is the first thing that I did. First off, 
just opening it. <laughs> that color. I mean, even I just sat there and looked at that. I got like, what? And then I turned the page and there was like a pink. Okay, let me just give you the experience so I can be like, where's the, where's the, oh, the camera's not going to pick it up. And there was a pink. I mean, just. I was like, this book's already getting started good. There's so many paintings in here I've not seen of his, and I literally got choked up. Is in here what? I mean, it's just so good. Uh, and now that I'm painting outdoors or like doing more nature and outdoor sketching, plein air stuff, he's really helping me. Like I'm able to look at these and kind of go, now how did he tackle a tree in the summer? or whatever, just looking at value and shapes and color and design. The other thing that I'm loving about this book, let's see if I can find it, yeah, okay. I love this painting. So it'll show a painting like this, and his paintings were big, like he painted a lot. And then on the next page, it will do a zoomed in version of that. So you can see the detail and the brush marks and stuff. This is the kind of stuff that like makes me just need to go in and paint. Let me just tell you the biggest compliment I've ever gotten in my entire life as an artist. We were in this really great gallery one time. I think I got emotional because <laughs> there was just so much good art. And um, I saw Grady standing over looking at a painting and I could just see him, but I couldn't see the painting because he was around the corner. Like Grady usually goes and finds a bench at the gallery and sits down, right? There, he was looking at a lot of the art, so that tells you how good the art was. And I thought, I can't wait to go see what he's looking at. So he calls me over and he's like, look at this painting. It was, I wish I could remember the price. Let me ask Grady. Hey Grady, yeah. do you remember the price of that Fairfield Porter painting in that gallery? Okay, he said it was either like a quarter or a third of a million. It was real expensive and it wasn't a very big painting. I turned the corner, I was like, oh, Fairfield Porter. And then I was like, look at the price you know kind of thing he said Sandy like I don't want to minimize this guy's painting but I don't, I don't remember exact, his exact words but he was basically like you paint like this like you can paint that you can paint this and it wasn't minimizing his work but he was encouraging me and I mean obviously I'm not I'm not as good as Fairfield Porter he was like I see this kind of work in your paintings which oh, was just a real blessing I mean it just like that and that has stayed with me okay Here's the painting that we saw in that gallery. So I was just thrilled that this painting was in this book because it reminds me of that moment and those sweet words from my man. Guys, I'm jumping back on here because I knew I had at least one other thing to show you guys and I feel like maybe more. I just need to take time to look around the studio. I didn't do a good job keeping everything together, but the very first book that I got in, I forgot to show you guys. Okay, I also got this art book from David Hockney, and it's the Yorkshire Sketchbook, and it's a small one. I think they made it the same size as the sketchbook he worked in, and this has been a jewel. There are some sketches in here that, guys, I just... It's been really helpful to look through this and inspiring as I'm doing this in the mornings myself, just kind of walking, just to think through how do you sum up all of that and he does a really good job of it I would highly recommend it I mean the way he has designed this and the patterns and the color it looks like a child could do this but I'm telling you you go look at this busy scene and try to do this and it's just it's not easy here's another one I love again just design work pattern texture Yeah, I've just loved everything about this book. And it's already taught me like so much how to narrow down the landscape. I love this. I mean, hello. Look at that. Look at the little bits of color. It's just, it's really stunning. And this is so hard to do, even as simplistic as it looks. Look at that. I mean, these shapes right here. Whoa. Yeah, it's a great one, guys.
This is one I'm gonna be looking at a whole lot too and getting a lot of inspiration from. So another good one, another really, really good one. I have got a couple more art books coming in that I will be sharing with you guys when I get those. But for right now, this is uh, the haul. So everything will be listed below. I hope you've enjoyed it.